Hey everybody, I'm Amanda with DevExpress and welcome to 14.2 Launch Week and today's webinar, What's New for WinForms and WPF 14.2, presented by DevExpress CTO Julian Bucknell and DevExpress Technical Evangelist Paul Usher. In today's webinar, learn more about the new products and features shipping inside our updated WinForms, WPF, and Windows 8 XAML subscriptions. With dozens of new features and capabilities, Julian and Paul will show you how you can build amazing user experiences with DevExpress components for Windows. Thank you for joining us. I will now hand things over to Paul and Julian. Thank you, Amanda. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm glad only 5% of you thought that we should be doing more. Hmm. Well, we're going to show you what we have done over the last six months. Uh, Paul will be uh, doing a little bit, I'll be doing a little bit, so we don't uh, strain our voices because there's so much to show you. And uh, So what's new in 14.2, WinForms and WPF? So let me just uh, pose a rhetorical question, I'd, I'd say. Where is Windows client development going? Um, as far as we're concerned, it's just not going away. Uh, yes, there has been a lot of news about ASP.NET, about MVC, about pure client-side web development, you know, all the whole web development type thing. Uh, there's a lot of news being um, broadcast about it recently. Microsoft have done a lot of work with regard to open sourcing.net. And uh, in reality, what they're open sourcing is the ability to create uh, web servers on Azure very quickly uh, with .NET as the basis. And but you know, Windows client development it always never seems to you know have that much oomph. Microsoft, uh, let's look at it from Microsoft viewpoint. WinForms is uh, stable and robust. It's been around for, yes, a long time, since 2002, which is when we first produced our WinForms grid uh, in the beta days for .NET. So I'd say, you know, essentially Microsoft are not going to be updating the runtime particularly um, uh, broadly or anything like that. I'm sure they'll be doing, you know, minor bug fixes here, there, and everywhere all the time. So I'd say it's uh, stable and robust. It's we know what it is, we know how it works, and we know people are still using it. And we will uh, continue to provide, as Paul will show you in a moment, a lot of new controls and new functionality for modern applications for you know a standard runtime. WPF itself is being worked on. There was a new roadmap published. And here's a, a quick uh, short URL there. And the new roadmap was basically talking about you know some changes in the UI, um, a lot of work being done on the performance of WPF. There are um, certain areas within WPF which can be improved and are, is being improved. Uh, for a while there, we were a little worried in case WPF was going to be dropped. But in essence, no, because XAML is the new way or now the standard way to define UI across the board. Um, not only WPF, but um, you know the so-called Metro apps for, for Windows 8 and above, uh, universal apps which are coming in with uh, Visual Studio 2015. Um, they all use XAML as the basis for defining a UI. And um, I, I, I personally think, you know, this is, you know, I'm not reading anything that Microsoft have been saying about it, but I personally think that WPF is, is going to stick around for quite a while in the same way that WinForms is going to stick around for a while. And that is, uh, it's going to be there, you can use it, we know how it works, XAML is the way to define the UI, it's going to be improved, uh, we know that already through the roadmap. Windows Phone and Desktop, they, the new way of uh, writing these applications uh, for small mobile devices and tablets, they all use XAML as the way to uh, present a user interface. And of course, um, if you're interested in this side of the business, Xamarin are using XAML as well for their UI definition, so you can write applications for the Mac, 
and for iOS and Android. Um, you're not losing any expertise by um, using Xamarin, essentially. So XAML is the kind of new way to define UI, and uh, WinForms is there, but still robust. So I'd say the Windows client development uh, market environment is thriving. Uh, certainly our customers, you included, are very interested in new features and new controls, uh, new UI for Windows development to bring those classic gray uh, user interfaces into a 21st century modern look and feel with touch everywhere and, uh, and so on. So for this 14.2, there's lots more new features, new enhancements, new controls. Uh, we've been blogging about them. We'll be blogging still. As Amanda said, this is launch week. Uh, we will be, uh, well, I hope so, <laughs> um, launching 14.2 this week. Uh, I won't say which date it is yet, um, but it'll be there. And uh, I would say that over the past few major releases, we've shown that Windows client development is extremely important, and it just gets better with every major release we do. Now, the structure of this particular presentation is Paul is going to take us through uh, WinForms, uh, what we've done for WinForms, the new enhancements, and so on and so forth. And then I'll be back uh, in you know, 20 minutes or so uh, to talk about the same kind of things for WPF and what's been going on. So without further ado, I think we'll uh, call in Brisbane in Australia, or near Brisbane in Australia. Hello, Paul. Are you there? Good morning, Julian, and uh, everyone else that's joining us today. It certainly is an exciting week, and I personally love launch week. I'm just going to switch over to my screen, and then we can move on. So, Windows Forms, gunmetal gray, but personally, I love it. It's got to be the number one environment that I like to write software for. Nothing wrong with WPF, has a place, and as Julian said, it has a moving forward market, particularly with the different aspects and devices that we can now target with it. But I want to share some of the things that have been happening in the last six months for 14.2 when it comes to WinForms. I'm always surprised, I suppose amazed, each time we do a release as to the different things that the teams can enhance new controls. But one of the things that makes all this possible are the requests that come in from you guys, the developers that are out there using our controls in your day-to-day -day lives. And I want to just encourage you that if you come up with something, if you find something you think would be really cool, use the support center, register a suggestion, because that's what the engineering teams are going to be working from. We, hear, we like to hear from you guys, and we build things based on that. Having said that, how can we continue to come up with new controls? Like we've got such an amazing toolkit already, and we'll keep enhancing for every new release. So 14.2, we're already looking at our roadmap for 15.1, and we're adding new things all the time. In this particular release, I'm going to show you through a couple of brand new controls in the WinForms library, and I'm going to take you through the enhancements that have taken place in a number of our products. You can see from this slide, we're talking the grid control, the scheduling, tree list. We've got some fantastic additions in spreadsheet, the data editors, charting, desktop UI, the pivot grid. There's more changes happening in the printing libraries, the mapping, some really exciting stuff when it comes to the PDF viewer and also the layout control. What I'm going to do is take you through the demo center in 14.2 and highlight specific things. Now, in previous What's New presentations, we've tended to focus heavily on WinForms and not so much on WPF. This time we decided to break it in half, so I've been given a limited amount of time to take you through just the WinForm things, and then Julian will take you through everything to do with WPF. Now, we don't want questions yet. So let's switch over and start with the
the new controls. As far as brand new controls that were released, we want to take a look at the data editors. The first thing I'm going to take you through is the time span control. Obviously, date combos or date selectors have been around for a long time, but one of the things that we often get asked is, how do I select a time span? We now have a brand new time span edit control. It's optimized for touch, and it's really easy to get to grips with. You can see from the minute I drop down the list here, I've got a selection of days going from 1 through to 99. I could just quickly pick the number of days, number of hours, minutes, and even seconds that I want to select. Click that, and everything is returned back to the edit feature, edit value in the control. The first thing I asked when playing with this back in the beta days was, well, that's nice, but I only want to deal with hours and minutes. By using the properties, I can very quickly just remove the days feature. I can come down to the display format, and I can say I only want to show hours, minutes, and seconds. And we can see straight away that that is updated, both in the visual string that's displayed and the drop-down editor as well. As always, there's a number of additional properties that I can select. Instead of saying maximum 100 days, I could limit that to how many days I want to give my user. So it's quite a nice little addition to the controls. For those that are familiar with our ASP.NET controls, we use the rating control in particular. It was focused on in the DX Hotels demo recently. That same control has now been brought to WinForms. It provides a really nice way of showing a rating value, typically to do with, say, customer feedback or how many, what presentation level a hotel or a restaurant may have. But you can see here, as I mouse over, I can change the value of the, the rating very quickly. I can do that inside my properties, selecting however many elements I want. I can also control the number of items to be shown. So it could be that I have a seven-star rating system, or even a three. I get to control the orientation, which means that I get to put the control precisely where I want inside my form. Precision can be done on a complete star, or we can introduce a half rating. So it makes it easy if something is rated 3.5. Or in fact, I can also do an exact number. I can look at the direction that the rating control is going to be displayed. So if I wanted to, I could reverse that, showing the item count and the rating going from right to left. And best of all, I can come through and select custom images if I want. So here I've got some preset ones. I'm just going to choose the item, apply, and I now have a rating control. Let's make it left to right with custom images. Of course, it has full text support. I can add text into there. I can set my indents, have it left aligned, right aligned, and support HTML context as well. So two brand new controls that have appeared in 14.2. The other thing I'll want to jump straight to and show you is the workspaces feature inside the UI layout controls. Now, if you're familiar with software such as Photoshop or other design packages, even Visual Studio has a workspace or layout section. You might notice that when you compile and run your application, your windows move into a different place. And the idea is that depending on what task you're focusing on, you want to use your workspace in a slightly different way. What we can now do is from the workspace menu, we can load and save different workspaces. Once we've created workspaces, they are displayed on this context menu, and I can jump between different ones. So I'm on my default workspace at the moment. I'm going to select the performance analyze option, and we'll see that the workspace is then moved around. I'll choose the next option, and say I want to do my compare document, and we have a transition happen. You get to control everything that's happening here. So the layout of the workspaces, you, you, you can provide it for your end user or you can pre-build them. 
And you'll notice on the properties grid on the right, I can actually set what kind of transition is going to happen as well. So in this case, I have a little drop down menu where I can select what kind of transition. I might want to fade as opposed to a comb. When I choose my workspace, I'm now going to have a fade. Might not come through so well with GoToWebinar, but you've got these effects that you can just implement straight out of the box. As far as new controls, we also have the Windows UI search panel. If you're familiar with the look and feel of Windows 8.1, you'll know that you can invoke a charms dialog by going to the right and selecting the, the fact that you want to search. Well, the UI search panel allows you to do something very similar. I've invoked this by pressing Control F, and now I'm going to say CAL for California, and we can see that all items matching that inside the child containers are shown, and I can switch straight to that element. So that's yet another new, brand new control that we've introduced in 14.2. Let's take a look at some of the enhancements that have been made to our existing controls. There's been some changes to the conditional formatting inside the grid control. But from the, the slide that we're looking or not the slide, the application we're looking at now, you can see that we've added the ability to embed charts directly into your grid templates. So you've got the, the chart editor where you can set up your chart styles, your series, and do your binding inside the grid layout itself. In a similar fashion, you can also embed gauges inside your editor. So here we're looking at a, a card view style, and we can see that we've got this really nice looking gauge that just draws your attention to information that you want to show on the actual view. We've got the tile view layout, again fashioned around that Windows UI, Windows 8 UI, where you can lay out your data on a tile view, which makes it a lot more pleasant to view certain aspects of your data. Of course, you can change the orientation, you can add the grouping, everything you'd expect from the, the template layouts. You can control the tile sizes, so on and so forth. Still on the grid, we've introduced some context buttons for the Win Explorer view. Now this view was added uh, a couple of releases ago and is great for producing a, a nice graphical way of seeing your data. We're using the, car, the, the cars database as an example, but as I mouse over each of these items, you can see that I'm presented with the ability to embed other controls. So here we're seeing the rating control. I've got these context buttons along the title. And as I click each one, it's simply going to demonstrate the events that get fired behind these context buttons. After the grid, let's take a quick look at the spreadsheet control. Now, the spreadsheet control has simply gone from strength to strength. Just requires Paul to find it. The feedback on the spreadsheet control has been phenomenal. A quick search on the support center will show just how passionate you guys have taken up the control. And there's a couple of things that have been top of the list requests since we released the product. The first one, which you can see now, is the ability to do outlining. And you can see just from the visual aspect here, I've got these control nodes that I can collapse my data either on a so row basis or even a column basis to keep everything closer and present. Second to the outline feature was the ability to sort and filter in the spreadsheet. Now I know everybody out there is muted right now but I can hear the claps. It's got to be the number one thing that was requested as a feature, the ability to sort directly inside the spreadsheet and also filter data inside the control. So here I'm going to choose filter values, I'm going to remove dairy and grain and just add condiments in 
and straight away in the control we can see that that's happening. We've added the ability to create and preview comments against cells. So here we can see the little comment marker and we can see the comment itself. We can show and hide those. Obviously the little marker stays there and we want to show. We can add, remove, edit all those comments. We've added a trend analysis feature into the spreadsheet. So if I take a look at my trend data here, we can see that you can create your range by adding a trend and that's going to be plotted on the chart. And there's a number of different ways that that can be looked at and I'm going to leave that for Julian to step through in a little bit more detail. You've now got direct access to the document properties directly inside the spreadsheet. So here we can see the doc prop passing in the field that I want to look at, whether it be title or author, company. And of course, to complement all these things that have been added into the spreadsheet control, we've updated the API so that you can interact with it at a program level. Again, making it a very, very powerful option to present spreadsheet functionality to your end users. We've added some new features to the charts. This feature is called selection and allows you to drill in, or not so much drill in, but select data directly on the chart. So here, as I select each item, I'm gonna see that that gets combined in this chart on the right hand side as well. And you can see the cross hatching appearing on the pie chart as I continue to select elements in there. There was also some updates to the text annotation where you can control the text that's going to be shown. You can see that in here we're using markup so you can add your HTML style markup to really draw the user's attention to things in your charts or in your presentations that you want to do. The user at this point wouldn't have to go through and try and work out what's going on in the chart. You're drawn straight to those labels. So we've added more functionality behind the annotation feature. As well as charts, we've introduced some new features on the gauges. You can see here the gauge control and it was featured inside the grid control as well. We've got the ability to add custom images inside the gauge. And very quickly, I can select a gauge and I can come through and change the color palette for the entire thing. So now I've gone to that light green. I might want to make it blue, maybe yellow. It's that simple. Select the gauge, set the color, and you're done. The tree list control has now had banded layout added to it. So if I come up to here, we can see that you can allow your users to group by different columns to do the cell combining. To You can still obviously lock it down if you don't want your end users doing or you can change it programmatically, but as a tree control, you've now got that ability that you've been asking for to do the extra work. And of course, there's been changes for things like the conditional formatting. This might look like the grid control, but I assure you it's the tree list in action. Let's collapse here, and we can see that formatting applied in a nice, easy fashion. The scheduler control. Find the right tab. Now, the scheduler is a very powerful part of our toolkit. And I know a lot of people that have worked on everything from basic diary type applications through to large commercial booking style apps for hairdresser management, for anything that requires you to work with an Outlook style scheduler. We've taken another step further and given you the ability to work directly with the entity framework. And you can bind that into something such as a SQLite database where the scheduler is simply bound to the DB set entity property of your 
database and it takes care of all the management behind there. So it removes that need for you to go in and be setting up specific fields and bindings, etc. We've simplified that whole thing. The other thing that you asked for was the ability to see the scheduler in a full week view. So not just work week, but now you can limit the view to a seven day schedule. We made some changes to the map control. Now, for quite some time we've had this beautiful map functionality. You could switch between your normal views, your road views, bind it to open maps, bind it to Bing, all great. What we've now done is add the ability for you to also include Cartesian maps. The example here, we've got some resorts or some hotels. Obviously, I can do my zooming. I can move the map around. I've got my mouse over. When I drill in and click on the hotel, I'm going to see a Cartesian view. So in this case, we're showing you a layout of the actual hotel, and that's overlaid with all the properties. I can still zoom in and zoom out, so it's completely in tune with what's going on, on the map. And as I move my mouse over, obviously you can see the introduction of the popovers and, and the ability to draw people's attention to other things. We've also added a beautiful day-night view. We can see there's a number of different ways that you can apply the projection to show what's going on. I'm not even going to pretend to pronounce some of these, but as I click through them, you'll see exactly what's going on. If I was to choose just one of them and say, show me the current time, it's going to show you that right now it's dark where I am and light where Julian is, which is about right. The layout control. Now, there's so much power in the, layer, in the extra layout control. If you haven't tried it on your WinForms app, then I definitely think you should on your next project. It just makes the entire design experience of creating an application a lot easier. You add the controls onto the layout and it's going to decide the best thing. We've taken it one step further again and we've added the flow layout. Now, the flow layout allows you, it's basically broken down into cells and you can nominate what size you want a particular element to appear in. Rather than just giving you a what you see is what you get approach, using that same concept, here is a Waybill form that's been designed. Obviously, if we're filling out all the details, this is what we'd expect to be doing on screen, data entry, data entry. But then I want to print the actual layout. So utilizing that same flow control style, when I do a print preview, it's not going to render on my screen with GoToWebinar running. That's nice. The print preview is going to produce that dialog um, and show you exactly how things are going to, to print on the page, giving you finite control over what's going on with the layout itself. And that's helped by the new flow layout. One thing that's been dear to my heart for quite a number of years has been the PDF control. There's been a lot of feedback as to things that you want to achieve with the control. First and foremost was print. We wanted, you wanted to see a more Adobe-esque style print preview or dialogue when you went to print. And that's what we've delivered in 14.2. You can see from this preview window, we've got a full preview of what's going to print to your printer. As I come down through the options, I can set the DPI for the printing. So I've got complete control over what's going to be rendered to the output. As far as the page range goes, I can select a specific number of pages. So two, four, five to six. What you're going to notice on the left straight away, this preview has updated to show me exactly what I'm going to receive. 
you can see that I'm printing page one of four and I'm currently showing page two of the original document. So as I step through there, page two, based on my print range, is going to be page four of my document. It leaves no sense of uncertainty when coming to print. You can select different sizing options such as fit and actual or produce a, set it to a scale. The same with the orientation. If you choose to do the auto orientation, the print engine will decide the best possible output for maximizing the print on the page. And of course you've got the ability to select different outputs for your paper source. One of the most exciting things I think with the viewer control for PDF is now the ability to work with macro forms. So PDFs with embedded form information in them. This is a sample form that I picked up and here I can step through and you can see that I'm typing all the details on my form. Obviously we've got support for showing things like comments, we're working interactively with controls such as checkboxes or radio buttons, etc. Now in 14.2 initial release, this is a viewer side control. You cannot fill in these forms programmatically, but it is definitely coming soon. As far as support for code behind, things like the print form will work. We don't support additional Adobe Script in the background. For filling forms out, it is beautiful. You can embed this inside any of your applications. There's no need for Adobe Acrobat. You can now let your users fill in the forms, obviously save it, print it, do whatever it is that they want to do with that final form. I know that the clock's staring down at me, so I'm going to ask Julian uh, and Amanda, are there any questions on WinForms before we head over to WPF World? Hey Paul, it's Amanda. Um, we have a ton of WinForms questions. I think it might be best to wait until Julian gets his presentation in. No problem. Well, what we'll do is switch straight over to Julian and then he can take over. Awesome. Okay. Uh, well, thanks everybody. I've been answering questions in the background while Paul has been talking, so I'm sure Paul will now do the relevant honors to me as I do my presentation about WPF. Um, there have been a... yeah, well, I'll, I'll leave that to Paul. So, yes, there have been some questions. Paul will be answering, uh, taking over, and uh, we'll get back to um, verbal questions, if we might call it that, or oral questions later on in about uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes or so. So DevExpress WPF 14.2. Um, quick overview here. Um, I won't be showing every single one of these, but uh, essentially for the grid, uh, we are going to be supporting cell merging, or we are supporting cell merging. Uh, across the board here, we have a new Excel file export engine. Uh, this is extremely um, interesting and valuable. We've basically rewritten our file export for Excel. It's a lot faster. It supports uh, many, many more features. And in fact, uh, as I'll show in a moment, uh, you can create uh, analyses or views of your data within the grid and export it to Excel and it would look exactly the same with Excel. I'll show you that in a moment. It's uh, extremely um, good, fascinating, especially with things like grouping and sorting and all the rest of it. Spreadsheet, data grouping, uh, Paul showed you uh, some of these things within WinForms. They're also there for WPF. So Although Paul's uh, presentation is going to be longer than mine, he's actually shown a lot of the features I'm going to be showing too. So data filtering in spreadsheet, comments in spreadsheet, uh, the ribbon control, we have a new uh, office for iOS view. I'll talk about that in a moment. Maps, oh boy. If you're not doing maps in WPF, what the heck? 
pie charts, bubble charts on maps, map printing. Yes, I'm going to show you a, well, maybe I won't show you a piece of paper with a map on it. Um, mini maps, brilliant. Um, charts, uh, we have adaptive layouts, spline charts and funnel charts, if you have that kind of uh, requirement for that series. Uh, there's a radial menu control uh, lifted from OneNote, so inspired by OneNote. PDF control, we have the same form filling capabilities in PDF uh, control for WPF as we do for WinForms. Lots of other features as well. Uh, maybe I'll get to them, maybe I won't. We're already at 40 minutes. So 14.2 in action. Let me um, just drag this particular window over here and put it in place. OK, what's new in 14.2 uh, for WPF? Let's start off with the radial context menu. So as I said before, this is inspired by OneNote. We've had it in um, our other controls for a while. So we've had it certainly in our Win8 controls. Um, so let me just right click here. This is a radial menu. It's geared towards touch screens, I'd say, essentially. It's a way of presenting a menu, not in the normal tree list type way, but a way of encapsulating the uh, relevant context commands or features that you want in your application. So it's a context type menu. So if I, you know, these big uh, buttons, if you like, um, targets. Um, I can click, I, okay, I don't have a, a touch screen on this particular laptop that I'm using at the moment, um, but I'm sure you can see the effect of um, being able to touch these um, targets with your finger and getting um, you know, the, the relevant, let's change the font size to something else, and then we can type in something very big. Oh, it's just bold. Um, so, radial menu from OneNote, very much a, a feature that has been asked for. Now let's jump over to the grid, the new cell merging capabilities of the grid. I hardly have to explain what it's about. I mean, here we are, we have um, a group of cells here with the same value in it. And what we're doing here is we're merging those cells into one value. And in this particular example, it makes the whole display, the visualization of the data very much um, easier to understand, easier to see. So we have the cell merging here, we have cell merging here, we have cell merging across these cell merges, if you see what I mean. We can also show things like spark lines within the cell, uh, the merged cells, and so on and so forth. So the data is not getting repeated. It doesn't look like a you know sort of standard looking spreadsheet type thing. Very much a feature that helps you visualize the data and to understand your data. And that's what the grid is really all about is the ability to understand data. Data aware export, new feature here. Here we have, uh, we've already grouped this uh, particular set of data by country. As you can see, you know, the countries here. So we can show a particular country, say Andorra. We have some, you know, arrows showing, you know, whether the this particular value, sales versus target, is going up or down, uh, market share, and so on and so forth. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to export it to Excel. So remember what's on the screen, and I'm going to create this document in some bizarre place. Uh, we're going to export this data. I'm going to open it in Excel. Excel, of course, is going to show up on my other screen, so let's just drag it over here. And here we are showing the 
the same data grouped in the same way. We're grouping by country. We have the same kind of arrows, whether are going up or down, or whether it's not very uh, important or not. And the same arrows over here for customer market share. So as you can see from the data grid inside your application, you can enable the user to do some basic analysis within the grid, maybe just stay within the grid, or export it to an Excel file, uh, whether it's XLS or XLSX, and then continue their data analysis from within Excel. So let's drag that back out of the way. That dataware export, as I said, is an engine which is available across the board. So you may hear about it in other presentations, other webinars we're doing this week. Chart control, um, mentioned just briefly. Um, let me just find the, uh, the charting. Uh, we have 2D splines and 3D splines. Um, I think my demo app has just crashed. Beautiful. So while I'm, I'm just resetting uh, my demos, uh, any questions? Always lots of questions, Julian. I'm just oh, going through cool. this huge... <laughs> Can you hear me? There's this yeah. huge li list of uh, pe people throwing things out there. So the... Um, Questions on WPF. Um, are, we ta are we planning on making a time span control for WPF? I'm sure we will. Now there's a time span control for wind forms. Um, you, you've got to think about these these things in, in in a weird way, perhaps. There are two aspects to a control. Oh, well, there we go. It's just crashed. There we are. Okay. There are two aspects to these controls. One is the actual visual representation. The other one is the kind of, if you like, data binding going on in the background. The data binding stuff tends to stay the same, whereas the presentation obviously depends on the runtime you're using uh, for the um, for that particular control for that particular um, you know, display. Um, hang on a minute, let me. Uh... Next question, Paul. While I'm, yeah, my application has really crashed here. <laughs> Luckily, this so the is next, open the next the question. Data. Which <laughs> the next question is the things like the data export. Uh, is that going to be available in XAF? Now, I'm going to jump in here and say the XAF webinar is on later this week, and all XAF questions should be asked there. The short answer is Julian. Yeah, I'm here. Don't worry, I'm trying to get back to where I was. Um, so, yeah, in answer to the XAF questions, join us definitely for the 14.2 look at XAF and see some of the awesome new things that have been added there. Um, question, has the WPF schedule got a full view, week view as well? Yes, he says. Yes. In fact, um, let me just, here we go. Uh, let me just show it to you straight away. Here we are. The calendar and scheduling, full scheduling, scheduling, full week view. And here it is in WPF, showing your appointments for a, a full week. Um, so, brilliant. I could go back to where I was before, which was the uh, calendar control here. Uh, sorry, the charting control here, and here we are the spline, uh, which is essentially just a smooth curve joining your dots on your charts rather than just the straight lines. So we have uh, the normal 2D spline. We can have uh, some spline areas. So here we have the spline areas, which are um, a lot more um, visual, if you like, um, for charting. So um, let's go back to my script. <laughs> Find my script again. Um, oh, yeah, let's jump onto the map. The map control. So we had this in uh, WinForms um, 
in 14.1, so we've added this for 14.2 for WPF. This is the ability to show bubble uh, charts or uh, pie charts, I'll show you in a moment, on a map. So here we have a map of the world, and we're showing basically earthquake data uh, for these particular years. So notice how we can differentiate the bubbles by color here. Uh, these, so green is 1999, red is 1996. I can click on a bubble. Notice as I hover, the bubble will, uh, the border of the bubble will show, and I can show information about that particular data at that particular point. Um, just by clicking on the point, and I can zoom in. Obviously, let's go down to Australia. Um, only Paul was moaning about the fact there was uh, a uh, an earthquake in uh, Newcastle uh, recently, or in the last couple of years, or something. We're not showing that data here. Who knows? There's Paul. Wave, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, bubbles. Uh, this particular demo shows uh, pie charts in the same kind of way. We're showing a pie chart for each country here, and the slices of the pie are the different uh, energy uh, sources, and the size of the pie chart is how much um, total energy is being used on these particular countries for this particular um, uh, demo. Day and night, uh, Paul showed you this, so have exactly the same uh, ability to change the projections of the map. Um, it's kind of a cool um, demo. He's already shown you that. We have exactly the same thing for WPF. Um, let me quickly show you the photo gallery because it's been updated to show this map within a map. So here's the map within um, this particular map showing um, this particular region so I can drag the region and the outer map um, changes as I drag the region. So if I jump over to say Los Angeles, um, I can zoom in a bit. Actually, let's jump back over to Europe because it is a bit obvi more obvious about what's going on. So I can zoom out and as I zoom in the rectangle and the map within a map uh, changes size uh, to show um, the region I'm seeing in the outer map. So that's map within a map, or uh, I, I'm kind of reminded of picture in preview or something like that that you used to have on your TV. You probably still do it on, on your TV, but uh, this is mini map. Um, the ribbon, yeah, let's jump over to that. Let's uh, see what's happening within the ribbon control. This is the iOS office style. So it's very much geared towards uh, touch and minimizing the amount of real estate that's uh, being taken up by um, the, the ribbon itself within the application. So this is what it looks like on Office for iOS. Um, I can, you know, we have the same kind of contextual tabs. Um, the um, the ability to show. Um, let's make it bold. Um, give it commands within a small amount of space, but still make it very touchable. Um, there's also a what we might call a, a slim office um, view or theme. Again, this is more to do with minimizing the real estate taken up by the ribbon and to make it very touchable. Scheduler control, oh, I've already shown you the uh, uh, the full week view that we had in uh, WinForms that uh, Paul showed you. Uh, we have it here in WPF as well. Um, so finally, I'm just going to quickly jump over to the spreadsheet control because we are running out of time. I do apologize for the, the mini crash that we had, um, <laughs> my mini crash. Same trend analysis um, formulas and uh, the ability to chart trends and to calculate trends of your data. Uh, if you need it, you really need it. If you don't need it, well, it's there, but I'm just going to ignore it. Same outline features, uh, the ability to uh, create grouping within your spreadsheet. I will just briefly say, and I won't show you, but you can file save 
and load this document inside Excel and it would look exactly the same inside Excel. Um, same sorting and filtering uh, for the spreadsheet. Here we are. Um, Paul showed you categories. You can sort by text or sort by values. Uh, we'll do the same thing he did, which was add condiments and beverages. Or maybe he didn't add beverages this time. Maybe he's had a a bad night on the booze. Hmm. Or we can sort um, categories as well as filter categories. So that's essentially it. There's a, a few more little things. We also have the same form filling inside the PDF um, control. Uh, but at this point, since we're running out of time so quickly, I'm going to jump back to my slide deck. All right. Thank you, Paul and Julian. Um, like Paul mentioned earlier, we do have all of our Launch 14.2 webinars coming up this week. Uh, tomorrow, you can join Mahul Harry on what's new for ASP.NET Web Forms and MVC. It will also be at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Then December 3rd, what's new in reporting and dashboards at 10 a.m with Seth Juarez and Paul will be back with HTML5 and mobile on December 3rd at 1 p.m. So we have two webinars on December 3rd, one at 10 a.m. and one at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. December 4th uh, will be What's New in XAF 14.2 presented by Seth Juarez and then December 5th, What's New in Code Rush with Mr. Mark Miller. So again, seating is limited for these 14.2 launch webinars. Register today if you haven't already for your spot. We also have several upcoming webinars post-launch, uh, DevExpress ASP.NET Connecting Your Site to the Cloud, Responsive Web Design with DevExpress, and Making the Transition from Web Forms to ASP.NET MVC, all coming up after launch and into 2015. All right, that is it for this one. Thank you so much to Paul and Julian. Thank you for joining us. And of course, thank you for choosing DevExpress. Bye-bye.